Uh, good morning, everyone. Hope uh, you're all doing well, doing good. Yes, no. OK, <laughs> that's good. That's good. And also the uh, online students, uh, good to have you here uh, in uh, today's session. Let's pray, and uh, we will get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you for equipping us with the truth of your word. Lord, we pray that, Father, we will grow in our spiritual authority, that, God, we will walk in victory, Father. And, Lord, we thank you that you've already defeated the enemy, Father. And, uh, Lord, we, we praise you. Uh, Lord, uh, today, as we uh, take time, Lord, in the word, Holy Spirit, we ask that you will help this word, Father, become uh, a revelation to us so that lord we can uh, grow up in you and uh, lord be stronger in jesus name we pray amen, amen. okay so uh, we were talking about uh, satan and you know how he came into the picture and we said that the origins of satan we don't have uh, too many passages to give us all the details. So uh, the question some of you asked uh, that, um, why did God send Satan to the earth? Why didn't he send him anywhere else? Or uh, there was the other question, why didn't God punish him immediately? So I was just trying to research all this. Uh, but even other commentators and authors say that uh, it seemed, obviously, that it you know Satan and his story is not the main story. Whenever we see a play or a drama, there is a main story. And then there are all these side stories, isn't it? So since Satan is not the focus of what God is trying to do, we don't have much which is spoken about Satan. And God thought it's not important also to tell us you know, all, all those details. Uh, and uh, therefore, the answers to these questions, the, there are commentators who say, we don't know. We don't know. Why God sent Satan to Earth? Why not to another planet or somewhere in the universe? We don't know. Or why didn't God punish Satan immediately? They also say, we don't know. Uh, and there are certain things that we should be OK with not knowing you know, fully, like what exactly happened. But having said that, we could, we use the term speculate. Or based on what we know, we we try to reason things out. So I feel that because God is, you know, a God of redemption, maybe uh, he wanted to, there, there was something before Satan shows up in, in uh, the book of Genesis that, is it that God gave him some chance? to change or uh, show some repentance. I don't know. Maybe uh, God wanted all that before he could directly send Satan to hell is my guess. Okay, But it's a speculative thought. There is no basis for this in scripture. So we could only, we can only speculate. Okay, So uh, yeah, we leave it at that because there's no point uh, trying to find answers to uh, these things which have no answers in the Bible. And it's not the main story. OK, right. So let's move on. We are talking about mm, the demon spirits. So Satan, we have an idea. Where did he come from? Uh, and um, you know who he is, his nature, some understanding we have. So demon spirits and even Satan, we will see You know what, what, again, what is their nature? Origin we've understood, but what is their nature? What did they do? Because whenever we go into battle, you must have uh, noticed this, that nations have their armies and they have their uh, military force. And they study other neighboring nations, other nations closely. Like what weapons are they using? You know, how do they attack? Why? Because it's a protective, it's a defense mechanism. When you understand the enemy, what are you trying to do? You're trying to protect yourself. You're trying to be ready to overcome the enemy. So that is the intention. So why are we trying to uh, understand the nature of Satan? He is not the main person in, in uh, uh, God's story, but he's very important. 
Remember we said you shouldn't take a Satan lightly, Jude 1, 9 and so many other things because he is a very real being who is uh, influencing mankind at this time. And we must understand how he functions and how his, his set of angels, remember we, we said one third of the angels, they were also banished from heaven along with him. So what do they do? Uh, how do they work? How do they affect mankind? These are important questions. We have to understand them. So we usually call those uh, spirits or angels who were thrown out with Satan as demons. So demons are not people. Demons are not some new creation that God created. People get scared. Oh, demon. They are those fallen angels. We call them as demons. Now, these demons can also be understood as what we know call as disembodied spirits. Okay, disembodied spirits. I'm in chapter 3 of your notes. We call them that because they don't have a body. Disembodied spirits, they don't have a body. Jesus in Matthew chapter 12 verses 43 and 45 had something something to say about them. Can somebody read that text? Uh, Matthew 12 verses 43 and Okay. Verse 45. You can stop till then. Okay. So uh, we saw in this passage that after a spirit has been cast out, what does it do? It goes and it wanders in like arid spaces, arid land is what Jesus said. What is the spirit trying to do? It's trying to find another body. So these spirits need a body okay, to um, do what they want to do. And we also see that they go and find seven other wicked spirits so that they can come back and try getting in, into the place from where they were cast out. So what are they trying? Constantly they are trying to find a space to live in or a body to live in. So they are disembodied spirits. They don't have a body, but they look for a body. So where do they live? What kind of bodies? Human bodies, of course. That is why demons were cast out of people. They also lived among animals, okay? Or they can occupy animals. You remember when Jesus cast out demons, uh, legion, uh, the spirits, what did they say? Permit us to go into the pigs. So animals, they can even live in? animals. Uh, we see that in Genesis, you remember, mm, the serpent came and spoke to Eve. Serpent God created, no? It's an animal or creature. But Satan was working through the serpent. Do you understand? So what's happening? Demons, fallen angels, they can occupy creatures, animals. Okay, and um, when Paul writes to the Corinthians, I think we have looked at this passage. He says, when people worship, you know, they sacrifice to idols, it said, right? So he's saying, what are they doing? They're actually sacrificing to the spirits that are empowering these idols. So, and inanimate objects, they don't have life. You know, something that is a substance, it doesn't have life. But Paul is saying that there can be that spiritual influence on those inanimate objects. So even things, material, can be influenced by spirits. 
um, we see in Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy as well. Remember, we said that some of those particles, God, God said, things of worship, you don't bring it back with you because they had that influence of the demonic spirits. So there can be uh, material objects that also have carry demonic presence. So this is where uh, demons, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 25, 26. So are we clear about demons? They are spirits who are looking for bodies and they can live in human beings, animals and also things. Now, what else about um, demons can we understand from the Bible? We see that they are organized and structured. Okay, They have a system, in other words, in Ephesians chapter 6, Verse 12, when Paul writes to the Ephesian church, he says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spirits of wickedness. So what is he listing out? He is listing out what we call as an hierarchy. Hierarchy means, simply means, uh, you know, a, a sort of a, you know, a structure in which maybe you know you you can say something like the king his ministers and uh, some other subordinates and then some other subordinates so there is a structure even within the kingdom of the kingdom of darkness or satan's kingdom so uh, we see these titles principalities 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 refers to chief rulers so there are demonic powers which are the key in charge, they are chief rulers, okay? Uh, they are known as principalities. There are powers. Powers are demonic authorities. They carry, you know, some kind of uh, uh, um, authority delegated power, which is given to them to do certain tasks. So there are powers in the demonic kingdom. There are rulers of darkness. Rulers of darkness could also be understood uh, like rulers over specific regions, rulers over specific areas. Okay, So in that way, uh, some have been delegated or assigned. There are spirits of wickedness. They promote wickedness, basically. See, based on their names, they have their responsibility. So, uh, I mean, I don't know how uh, Satan has come up with order and structure, but there is order and structure even in the demonic realm. So we can again ask the question, how did he come up with this? Why did he come up with this? But our speculation is that, you see, usually a copy. It's an imitation of what exists in God's kingdom. So that's the best that Satan can do. So when he sees order in the world that God created, he's just trying to copy and you know make use of all these things. So there is a structure. We also notice that demons have a personality. Okay, personality is, you know, when you look at somebody who's kind, you say, oh, this person is so kind. Or you look at somebody who is wise, you say, oh, this person walks with wisdom. We attribute to their personality. They are so compassionate. They are so generous uh, or they are so uh, rude. It's something. We, we know how the person functions. And so we attribute these, uh, you know, qualities to them. So when we look at demon spirits, they have personalities. We can tell how they will come across or what they are going to do. So uh, we see that there are names given to demon spirits, even at the time when Jesus was ministering, unclean spirit. Have you read that? So why is it called an unclean spirit? Because there's something that the spirit does, you know, that has to do with uncleanness or deaf and mute spirit. Why that name? Because there is a personality, something that the spirit does that has to do with making people deaf, mute, blind, spirit of fear. You see that? 
so there are names attributed because with those names we can understand what those spirits are doing and we can go against that um now we can also say that in a way we can say that these spirits are specialized so if there is a spirit of fear that spirit may not actually be involved in other activities like you know causing sickness in in somebody's life like spirit of infirmity is generally a spirit that causes sickness okay so you go by the name because they are mainly doing that bringing fear or you know uh, bringing in that uncleanness or uh, infirmity sickness upon that person or blindness or muteness or whatever so uh, they are specialized according to their name they tend to function uh, and we also observe that spirits can be territorial and they can have a set of spirits that are under them and so a whole bunch of spirits can be uh, assigned to a particular region so you know sometimes we say things like um, mm, uh, uh, of course you know prince of persia prince of greece that itself shows us that there are certain spirits assigned to that place and they are working in that place and they do um, some particular activities in that place and even in our experience we observe that you know in some areas uh, there might be alcoholism i've mentioned this earlier uh, or mob violence or a lot of corruption which may not be just human actions but it is empowered by demonic spirits okay so spirits can be territorial now if you go out of that region to another region you may not experience what was going on in that place why is that corruption happening it has come to a play level where now it is being empowered by demonic spirits so it has to be broken through prayer through you know spiritual means only then we are going to see a freedom only doing things in the natural realm is not going to resolve it anymore okay so that's how these spirits work they are specialized they have a personality they can also be territorial okay now let's look at the attributes or the character of satan uh, last time one of you asked you know devil what does that mean so devil is adversary slanderer it says okay slanderer uh, simply means somebody who speaks behind we say right speaking behind someone's back or putting someone down so satan has that or devil uh, he has this attribute this quality of putting down or speaking ill of uh, people or god whom he has created why do you think he is trying to do all this huh I have too many voices. <laughs> okay, um, I'm not getting a name. Go ahead. Yeah, you can to separate us from God. Okay, fine. To separate us from God. Uh, one more answer. Same answer. Oh, you repeat the question. Okay, Vimal, you have any answer? <laughs> Why is Satan? doing all this speaking ill of us putting us down okay we are taking his place meaning in god's sight no god values us he's created us in his own image obviously satan doesn't like it yeah. oh, okay so he is jealous of us and he wants us to be with him in hell correct because because he yeah he hates god yeah okay that could be another reason why he's doing all these things um okay so no comments here so these are all some of the reasons why satan is against mankind uh because obviously what he thought out of his pride and deception is i'll become greater than god but where is he now he's nowhere and uh, he noticed that
God has given human beings uh, his love and authority, dominion, and he doesn't like it. Okay, so he's become our enemy, and that's why he's engaging in all these things. Uh, so he's a slanderer, Satan. Okay, another way to to uh, describe him is accuser, accuser. He accuses us. Okay, he puts us down. He says all kinds of um, lies about us. He opposes us. So that is his way of uh, uh, standing against mankind, standing in the way between God and us. So try to understand all this because you see, even in our own lives, we see Satan tries to attack us like this, trying to put us down, speaking lies into our mind, accusing us and saying, oh, you're not worthy. You can't go before God. Then you immediately we can understand who is this? We know. Oh, the accuser. Because that is his character. That is, that is his nature. Satan has other titles in the Bible. You know, he is called as the old serpent and dragon. Okay. The old serpent is because, um, because of deceiving Eve in the garden. Maybe that's the reason why he's called as serpent. So what is the character? He's a deceiver. He'll show things in a grand way, right? And, and say, hey, if you do this, you'll get that and all. But actually, you'll get nothing. So that is deception. Uh, where he'll say one thing. He told Adam and Eve, you'll become wise like God, this and that. And poor people, you know, they went and they did it and they got nothing. They Sin came into the world and things only got worse. So he's a deceiver. He lies. Okay, He tries to uh, show us things in a grand way while actually those that is the wrong path to walk in. So he's a deceiver. Uh, he's also known as adversary you know adversary is enemy he is our enemy uh, he is known as roaring lion okay roaring lion why because he tries to look dangerous so everyone's scared oh satan because that's what he's trying to do he's like a roaring lion the bible says okay like a roaring lion but we know the reality he's already defeated He's a defeated enemy, and we should never forget that. So other names are tempter, tempter, because that's his job. He'll try to give us a better option. Hey, you know, try all these other things. Forget about what God's word says. Let me tell you what to do. But if we give our attention to Satan, then we're in trouble. Because that's what Eve did. She got tempted. She looked at the fruit. It looked so amazing. So Satan gave her that option. Wow, try this. And she tried it. And alas, you know, the results were terrible. So he's a tempter. Uh, he is um, also known as God of this world. He rules, right, in the uh, worldliness that he promotes in this world. So God of this world. But please note, whenever we write God of this world, we use small g. Okay, we never use the big G. So, God of this world. He's also known as Prince of the Air. Prince of the Air. Uh, because he is the ruler of the demonic spirits. And where are all these spirits functioning? You know, in, a, in a way, we say like, you know, um, people use the term second heavens they work from the second heavens and all so the prince of the air so he is the boss to all these demonic spirits that function uh, in their various capacities so prince of the air is another uh, term to describe him angel of light wow that is so opposite <laughs> to what he does but he has that name he can appear as the angel of light but don't believe him because he's a deceiver. Okay. But there is a title like that. If he wants, he can try and make himself look so, you know, pious, so righteous. I'm the angel of light. Okay. But we have to be careful. Then, uh, Beelzebub. Beelzebub is another name. I don't know how you pronounce that. Uh, but what does it mean? Lord of the dung. 
okay lord of the dung or lord of the filth garbage he is the lord of the filth that's who he is or it has another meaning lord of the flies lord of the flies so one way of uh, understanding somebody once said you know whenever you have a plate of food uh, and you leave there are leftovers on the food if you clean it up it's great but if you don't clean it up what happens flies will come right so that's how satan likes to enter he wants something you know sin works of the flesh when we keep those things in our lives he can try to come in and you know the lord of the flies he knows how to come and you know how to sneak uh, his way into uh, our circumstances and cause trouble so that is why we keep saying walk righteous before god and uh, be righteous you know in in front of the lord he is beelzebub the lord of the flies the lord of filth uh belial is another name which is given to him which means worthless okay uh without profit very sad all these names i don't know it's terrible uh, to even look at these names then it says evil one wicked one you know the evil one the wicked one these are also terms and you know it's understood what the evil one and wicked one mean um, there are few more terms the thief remember jesus said the thief comes to steal kill and destroy so he's also a thief it's so sad that all the bad things everything has been sort of put together and you're describing someone but what to do if the person is having this kind of a nature we are just trying to uh, understand it and you know term him with all, all these at attitudes so he's a thief he if we give him place in our lives he'll steal okay then other names are murderer murderer then liar father of lies these are all the names given to satan so with the names itself we can understand what he does now coming to his group ha huh? tell me satan have like lot of demons with him na mm. so god didn't create any demons mm. and uh, the other thing in like as we in, i don't know jesus before that so we used to talk like if someone dies it becomes bhoot <laughs> like that so dem, uh, devil himself created demons or how demons exist yeah so god did not create demons i i just shared that one third of the angels in heaven they were part of the rebellion okay they were with satan so satan is there and one third of the angels are also there who are against god now what god did he threw satan along with these angels he threw them out so when he threw them out they also um you know started functioning the way satan was functioning instead of calling them angels anymore we are simply calling them demons you understood they are actually angels but because now they are against god we are calling them demons so when people die you know when people die i know that in some cultures they think oh they become demons and they will come and haunt us but as far as the bible is concerned Jesus talked about it you know he said uh, heaven and hell heaven and hell he always spoke about that so if you uh, are born again when somebody who's born again dies they go to heaven okay because remember paul said to be absent in the body is to be present with the lord where is the lord he is in heaven so a believer whenever a believer dies we know that the believer goes to heaven okay if an unbeliever dies yeah as far as what yes yeah that judgment time is there but then as far as what the bible says that's what happens you remember that story of lazarus uh, lazarus and the rich man okay so the experience of the rich man 
you know, he's he's in torment. He's requesting, he's pleading, and he's saying, you know, give me a drink of water, uh, go and tell the people what's happening. Where has he gone? You know, he's gone to that place, uh, hell. So that that's what the Bible says. Little babies, okay. So see, there are some of these questions. We always um, go by the fact that the gospel is the main thing, okay. If we don't believe in Jesus, we cannot go to heaven, which simply means that those who don't believe in Jesus go to hell, okay. It's a very painful reality, but that's what the Bible says. But there are some of these questions you know, like uh, a little child, like stillbirth or just born, dies, what happens? I think we don't have answers in the Bible for these questions. So let God make the decision. He's a righteous God. So, yeah, we let him make the decision. Yeah. Yes. Uh, one second. I'll, I'll just go here to Nick. <laughs> no problem. You tell me. Your class is becoming very difficult for me <laughs> because your questions are so difficult. No, he's saying, he's saying when Jesus gave permission for um, uh, the demons which were cast out of that man to go into pigs, okay, uh, they the people who owned the pigs, uh, the pigs died, no, and so they had a loss. So he's saying if God is compassionate, if Jesus is compassionate, why did he cause a loss for the people who own the pigs? Cost. Oh, the cost of the pigs, huh? Anybody, anybody has an answer for this question? Hmm. Okay, Prince is saying maybe later God gave them double portion. We don't know about that. Huh? Yeah, okay, what do you think? Ah, very nice. See, you already have the answer and you're asking me the question. <laughs> okay. So I, I'll just translate. Otherwise, uh, online students will not know. So uh, Nikhil is saying that uh, Jesus is compassionate. So to save one soul, he didn't mind sending them into you know many pigs. So we see God's compassion right there that even for one soul, he did this. So that, that's his point. Yeah, but they asked Jesus, no, send us into those pigs. So he said, okay. See, uh, huh. mm. 
No, see, Jesus' main thing is to set the people free. So he cast out the demons. Okay. Uh, you're saying, what's your question? Good. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, see, at that point, those demons, uh, they, they, um, you know, they respond to Jesus and say, "Why have you come before our time?" See, because that is talking about the final judgment. Okay. Till such time, Satan and his demons, they are, if you want to say, they are allowed here on the earth. Okay. Um, so that is what it's referring to. It's not referring to the time in somebody's body. Now is the time to cast out a devil, always. If you see someone who is oppressed, now is the time to cast them out. But that, before the time, is referring to sending them into, you know, uh, banishing them into hell. So that's what it is. Uh, but I wanted to say some point, like Nikhil, about this, you know, about compassion of Jesus. See, Jesus is wise. That much we know. Yes, the demon said, send us into pigs. We don't know why he said yes. But I have I have a feeling there must be a reason why he said yes to it. And uh, what he did would have been a very, uh, you know, the wisest choice. Now, we don't know. If he sent out so many demons, uh, was there a possibility of, you know, some people being affected by it? We don't know, right? All those things. So definitely there was, it was a wise choice, that much I can tell you. But exactly why Jesus did it, you know, again, we don't have that exact answer. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. So everything we say will be maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so there's really no point. Uh. Animals have souls. Uh, no. No. OK. Technically, you mean, OK, they don't have spirits. That's my point I was making. But yeah, uh, they, they do have feelings. You can say that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, a uh, paradise, okay? Paradise or, yeah, paradise. See, paradise, just to tell us in a very simple way, before Jesus died, rose again, uh, I think in Ephesians chapter 4, you have a, you have a um, description of him going down to the depths. You know, he goes to Hades, he takes the keys. Yeah, he, he does all that. Till that time, paradise existed. After that, it doesn't exist. See, because it was like a, uh, it was like a standby sort of a space, because people were not allowed to enter into heaven without the work of Jesus, his salvation, his work of redemption, which he did on the cross. But once he did it, there is no more need for paradise. Once you believe in Jesus, you go straight to heaven. Sheol is hell. It's hell. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> See, Satan, yes. Like there is going to be those stages, right? Because we know that um, he's now here on the earth, but after that, he will be bound. He will be bound. He will be let loose during the millennium. But ultimately, there's going to be his judgment and he's going to be thrown into, you know, the lake of fire. So things like that. Uh, so all these
classifications there's only one hell so at least my understanding is that much hmm mm. yeah Yeah, see, there will be a, a judgment, okay? There's white throne judgment and all. There are judgments you can read in the Bible. This, when one dies, okay, uh, it's based on whether we believe in Jesus or not. But later on, you know, our lives will be judged. Like our entire lives will also be, that account will be taken. You get it? So that's how it is. But when one dies and they don't believe in the Lord Jesus, from what we can see, uh, there is no in between place, there is no intermediate place one goes, you know, to hell. Yeah. Yeah, paradise is not there. Only when, uh, till Jesus did that redemptive work, paradise was there. And it was also called as Abraham's bosom. You see, uh, because uh, that Lazarus, he went to Abraham's bosom. What is Abraham's bosom? It was paradise. But you don't see any reference to that afterwards. Because it doesn't exist anymore. anymore. Uh, no, there will be, we have to give account for our lives. Uh, see, when Jesus, oh, sorry? Yeah, so for our actions, we have to give an account. And uh, if you study more about judgments, okay, I'm not very detailed in that. So that's why I'm not giving you scripture and verse. Uh, but I'll just share how much I know. There are there is more information about this in um, I think when pastor teaches the uh, third year course on Revelation, Revelation book of Daniel. There uh, in detail he talks about all these judgments. So when in the second coming, you know Jesus comes and uh, he take like when he comes, all those who are in Christ, even the dead in Christ and those who are alive, we will be raptured, right? So then we'll go to heaven, isn't it? So at that time, there is a, um, I, uh, you know, there is, there is a, if you want to call it like a judgment on our works. So there will be crowns given to people based on their faithfulness and the works that they have done for God. And uh, so there are all these different judgments which will take place. So my point is that, yes, our life account will be uh, taken taken uh, and uh, we will be rewarded for the good that we have done and of course because we are in Christ Jesus now even later when we are judged and the wrong things which we may have done it will be seen in the light of Jesus' sacrifice so obviously you know we receive forgiveness and God leads us back into heaven or you know heaven is our final destination Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Yeah, so that's what we are saying. We are saved by faith, uh, uh, by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. So anyone who believes, we can have salvation. <laughs> no, no, no. We can continue. Uh, what we'll do is um, I will wrap up the class because we have uh, finished. Okay. Offline, we'll take the questions. Is that okay, everybody? All right. So, Vimal, can you pray? Just pray. Thank you, Jesus.
thank you for today's class lord thank you for uh, your word you are teaching us lord jesus thank you for nancy ma'am and thank you for everything lord jesus lord all glory belongs to you lord jesus your name be glorified in jesus name we pray amen 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 yeah uh, so thank you everyone thank you for connecting on this class we will continue uh, regarding you know the nature of uh, satan and demons in the next class and uh, take it from there so thank you god bless you have a wonderful day